Thursday, September 1st, 2022, in attendance, board members Danny Wick, Garden Staff, Wendy Johnson, Stephanie Gee, Barb Russman, and Jason Wheeler. Nobody on telephone, nobody absent today. Township representatives are Jack King. We also have Tom with us today. Thank you, Tom. Uh, meeting called to order at 7, or I'm sorry, 643. Um, public comments. And I just want to um, give a quick thank you to Public Works. The park looks amazing. The concession stand is coming along very nice. Um, the stage is being resurfaced. I also want to thank you, Tom, uh, for being the voice behind us on that. Um, that has helped us tremendously getting that moving. So again, thank you to Public Works. Thank you, Tom. Um, the, the park looks amazing. Um, even with the new shingles and the siding and everything up, uh, the park really does look good. Um, so it should be all ready to go here for Fall Festival. That's gonna be at the end of this month. Okay, meeting and minutes from August 4th, 2022. Um, submitted for board approval. I need a motion. Motion. And second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 5-0. Financial status update, Jack. Uh, <clears throat> there's thanks. six of us today. In your packet you have uh, several spreadsheets. Uh, I'm gonna ask you to go just to the brief spreadsheet so I can give you a breakdown. Uh, it's on your screens right now. I don't know if you can hear me or not. But... What you'll see is <clears throat> the first uh, breakdown, that's sponsorships by uh, event. Notice we have $13,250 sponsored for the fall festival. To the far right, You'll see uh, our designators. That's how it's going to appear on the sponsorship uh, ship signs um, that we're going to be putting up on the cyclone and fence again this year. If you move down to uh, the second page where it says vendors, uh, you'll see that I've broken down everybody that we have uh, to date. And that's one of the reasons we were back there trying to figure out what came under Mike the balloon guy. So um, where you see red right now, um, I can take that out because the total for the rock wall and the total for airbrush tattoos come in under Mike, Mike the balloon guy. Now, we've already given them 1605 for uh, the weekend and we owe them an additional um, about 4,200. So, um, as it stands right now, we're going to approve most of the invoices tonight. Uh, we have sponsorships as of today of uh, 13250 just for the fall festival. We have application fees of 11365 and change. Um, and once I take everything out, we're still with a balance of 577530 we still have the uh, signs to take out and uh, a couple other things. So we're, we're, we're still ahead of the game. And there's going to be um, some, some sponsor signs that we need to do. There's some new sponsors um, so that the sign bill was just for those signs. So we right. had some signs, and I'm going to work with Wendy and see because some of the sponsors are the same level. The signs that go on the, you know, on the fence. fence. The fence. So there's going to be additional fees for that, just saying. I just said that. I just mentioned that. So, yeah. It, Sorry, there, I didn't catch it. We have the sign, signs to come out. Um, we have a new sponsor for $1,000. That check just came in tonight, and uh, that's from Richie Metals. Uh, Wendy was supposed to be here tonight, but um, she declined because she lives a... a Good distance away, but she does um, work at Richie Metals and really wants to support the uh, fall festival. So, um, a couple of the board members said that there might be a few uh, smaller donations coming in. So, we may increase that sponsorship up to about fifteen thousand. One thing about Richie Metals too, when I met her today, they are starting an in-house committee that <clears throat> they want to get involved in the community and look for projects to help with and stuff. So she's very interested in partnering with us further. 
Okay, moving on, review of the August events. Um, movie night, obviously we had to change um, to a Friday night. Eh, kind of below in attendance, but it's the, overall it was a very good night. Um, couldn't ask for better weather that night. Um, the Shetland Rodeo, I was absent. Um, I heard the um, concession stand did very well. Um, you guys have anything to add for the rodeo? Uh, concession stand did about 750 in total. Uh, which was very good. Uh, a lot of the uh, pop was donated. The can pop was donated by Fort Cherry uh, Youth Baseball. Um, they gave us hot dogs. They gave us hamburgers. They gave us a few things. All that's uh, just you know pure profit for us. What we didn't use there, we're going to use um, in the. What well, we were going to use in the um, car cruise. Of course, the rescheduled car cruise now. And um, anything left over there, you know, we'll be able to, to use it in the fall festival. Um, only one major issue that came up, uh, somebody had donated two kegs of beer. It turns out to be two quarter kegs, so it was only a half a keg in total. Uh, unbeknownst to me, and uh, they came in, started selling beer. Uh, I caught wind of it through a couple sources and asked them to, to stop. They did. Uh, so there, it went without a uh, concern. Usually whenever we do something like that, I would need to advise the supervisors. I'd also need to advise the, the police, and none of that happened. So um, went out with went off without a uh, problem. Uh, pretty nice night overall, I thought. I thought everybody had a great time. Um, I know the sponsors and the uh, uh, coordinator was very happy with uh, how, how everything worked out. Um, and... I guess not as many people showed up as they had anticipated, but it was it was a successful event all the way around. The only thing is they did kind of mislead us about what it was. Like, I mean, I was led okay. to believe this was like for disabled kids or handicapped, and it was just the four cherry kids, which is fine. But, I mean, that's kind of what I thought when we were. And that's what I was advised, so I advised you the same. Okay, moving on, the reading picnic. I was here for the reading picnic um, just this past Tuesday. Um, it had a good showing. There was a good amount of kids here. Um, the kids had a blast, uh, whether they came for the picnic or the park. I mean, both benefited very well. There was a lot of people in the park, a lot of people doing the crafts, uh, reading the books, doing bubbles, you know, had uh, meatball hoagies. So I want to thank the Salvation Army for that. Uh, overall, that was a very nice, you know, small little, you know, what, about two-hour event? Yeah. So. And I, I did tell Amber that I thought sure we would want added into the rotation. Yeah, I, 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 I could see that keeping, keeping going every year. Just so you know, as a side note, so that uh, for future reference, whenever we rent pavilions, we only rent the pavilion. We don't rent the, the grassy area out front. Uh, Arden experienced that this summer when uh, he had a family get together, called me on a Sunday, Sunday afternoon and said, why are there people in, in the yard here? And I'm like, ah. <laughs> So I called around and, and just made sure, but uh, they're allowed to do that. And uh, I think that's something that I want to discuss with Tom and the other uh, supervisors. Is there any way that we can ensure that there is some area outside the pavilion? You know, I understand people like Pavilion 1 because it's next to the playground for the kids and everything. But what about the grass area right out front? What about the grill out front? You know, that grill's not under the pavilion so technically if you're only renting the pavilion then that grill is is fair game too and and that's where we're going to start having problem that um that should be included that it was a whole family that came up and just set up right next to your pavilion well, i mean they came walking on the sidewalk with like number seven balloon and all everything like that and i thought they're not coming to our party and they all stopped and looked at each other realizing that yeah. it was already rented and then they all just moved to the grass and they started a ball game there and everything right in the yeah. Right so to we're going to have to address that, uh, and uh, I'm going to talk to Tom about what we can do to avoid that because that's really that's encroachment. You know, that, I mean, that's really pressuring you when mm -hmm. it should be a family relaxed event. When you got how many people were there? Twenty five, thirty in that party. Yeah, but yeah. they, you know, like I said, they just and they started playing like they made like a little softball thing that the bases around, so our kids were getting mixed up in there. Uh, it was a, I mean. Yeah, they had to be there. They couldn't move like over the stream or they couldn't move down further into the park. I mean, uh, Pavilion 2, they were done by like 1 o'clock and left. I almost wanted to say, you know, that one's open now, but who knows yeah. if they were to come back. They had rented it. So, uh, 
And I'm certain nobody ever thought that thought that that would happen. Right. But you know, people come in expecting it to be open and don't realize you have to rent them. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Okay, cruising classics. Uh, obviously, that got po um, that it got postponed till uh, September 18th at the same time. Refresh my memory on that. Ten. What, what was the times on the car cruise? 18th. I know the 18th. The it's going to start at seven. Uh, the people are going to start coming in 6:30, 7 o'clock. So Registration is right. going to be at nine. nine. It's going to go nine to one. It probably go till five. Uh, concession stand will be done about three. And you said full menu starts at ten. Say again. <clears throat> full menu starts at 10. Yes. Again, Cruise and Classics is postponed until September 18th through the poor weather. Um, we, they're going to start that up September 18th from 9 to uh, 1 o'clock will be their registration. And we are involved in just a concession stand on that. Correct. Okay, moving yep. on. Fall Festival, we'll get an update from each of the project leads. Uh, vendors, go ahead, Arden. Um, they're still coming in. We're trying to like specifically look for like certain ones, so I posted um, on the Southwestern vendors looking for events. Yeah, I see you got that Norwex. Right? That, Nor that Norwex, that's one of the ones we contacted from after South Fayette. But uh, Wendy made a list of like the different like uh, Tupperware, Avon, ones we're looking for, so I'm tar targeting them, but I'm getting a bunch of other ones that aren't really you know target so they're rolling in now at least two or three a day so i'm trying to be picky finding out you know so we don't over overdo uh, it with like tumbler people and wood decor you know i mean we have a lot of those so but i think it's up to i'm not sure the count now um I, we're looking about 127 i have two that are kind of iffy right now that i'd like to talk to the board about okay. um but i'll wait till you're done and i have two more that are like for sure so i mean i don't okay so it's moving right along. We have um, a lot of people ask, asking for electricity. And I basically have said, you know, uh, the, the electrical outlets are full at this point. Um, I can accommodate some people. I can put them next to the pavilions that have the plugs. They can run extension cords and that type of thing. But I'm getting more people asking for in-out privileges, too. And um, I just, you know, I just want the boards OK to say no. Uh, it's either both days or it's no days. It's a safety issue. It is a safety issue because, I mean, if I can't get them right next to a gate or something where they can get in and out, um, I had uh, one lady call me about coffee. Uh, it's an El Salvadorian coffee with espresso and that type of thing. And, um, you know, I assured her that I would consider that a specialty coffee as opposed to the coffee that we're, we're selling in the, in the uh, concession stand. Uh, the very next day, which was yesterday, I got a call from a lady that um, she has a variety of specialty coffees that she wants to bring her van or her truck in, but she wants to be able to take it uh, home. You know, she's under Allegheny County Health Department, and I assured her that, you know, while she may be licensed under there, the um, Department of Agriculture, we don't have a health department in Washington County, but Department of Agriculture oversees these types of events. For your information, if the event is three days or more, the health department, or in this case, the Department of Agriculture would be actively involved because it's only two days, they're not gonna come in and inspect these, these trucks. So we've gotta be careful with the people coming in because at this point, anybody could set up a truck and say, I'm a, I'm a food vendor, you know, and, and there's still, you know, still a standard that, that we've gotta maintain. I think between Wendy, uh, Arden, and everybody else that participated in uh, vetting these uh, food vendors, um, I think we've got some of the best. We've got a, a variety. Um, I had another call today from a guy that um, he wants to do specific things, um, dipped bananas, you know, because there was a time we were talking about there wasn't enough sweet stuff. Um, we talked about the pie, pie lady. She's coming in. Um, we're, we're at capacity right now. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure where all those trucks are going to go. So we're going to have to spread them out throughout the, the park and possibly in uh, the parking lot as well. Courtyard. Yeah, we're going, to, we're going to do more of the courtyard type thing that we did because of the soft ground last year, where instead of just along the path, we're going to go out along the fence and then down. We can fit a few more booths in there. Uh, down by the stream, we're going to string them along uh, the stream more than just by the path because of that, that rolling uh, path, you know, off the path there, the walkway there. Simply because we want to fit as many people in as we can. Now, Dylan's quest for the cure, we're going to let him have a plug, right? 
<clears throat> the one that can also do popcorn. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're going to, everybody that, I discourage anybody asking for electricity. Um, we don't guarantee it. We, t we tell them to bring their generators. Uh, the one lady that, you know, is very persistent about uh, the espresso and everything like that, she has a generator. She doesn't want it to run all night. I said, then maybe, maybe this isn't your year. Um, so, you know, and I'll be okay with that, you know, because we, we're, we're busting out the seams right now. I mean, I've been turning away vendors that want just one day only. Turning you know, away, I, I, I've, been, I've been turning away vendors that just want one day only. Right. It's either two days or... And that's yeah. the thing, too. With the fireworks and it being so late, you yeah. know, I would consider the in and out privileges if we were done at 5 or 6 o'clock, but we're not. We're well into 7, you know, getting up there at 8 o'clock where it's dark, and I don't want vehicles coming in and out, you know, people in and out. I figure... You know, come both days, or I'm sorry. And like that, that was my excuse too. I told him, I said, <coughs> we have fireworks that night. You can't be pulling your car in and out when we're like, you know, the band's going on leading into fireworks, and that won't work. So they kind of got it. But yeah, I've been saying no. And one other thing everybody should know we were contacted by the Republican committee, and I told them, no, we do not allow politicking in our events. So here's, here's the, the rule on that no booths. Uh, no individual candidates, but they are allowed to walk around, right? So, uh, you know, that's, I guess that goes back to 2018. Uh, Arlene was on the board. Uh, Frankie was on the board. Tom was on the board. And that's kind of the takeaway from what happened there because it just, you know, this isn't a, a political thing. So I was very happy that, like, that's the policy. And yeah. You know, because this is not one election we went and get him in the middle of. Well, true. And, and honestly, nobody has called us to try to go over anybody's head. So uh, let's leave it at that. One other item I wanted to uh, bring up to you, there was um, the, the witch people, um, witchcraft people. Um, <clears throat> they've decided to withdraw. Um, and based on your advice, I, I told them there was no refunds as stated in the contract three different places. Uh, so they contacted me today and said that they were going to give that spot to somebody else. Um, I found out who it was. It's handmade purses. Um, and uh, I just replaced the witchcraft people with this person in there. So we didn't lose that, that, lose that spot. OK. OK. Real quick, can I go back to the electricity? I'm sure you've already thought this through, but I just want to make sure, because you said a bunch of people were asking. We still have the outlets available for like the kids' entertainment that need it. Those okay. are priority. Yeah, the airbrush people, um, any of the vendors that, that we have brought in just to do those types of, yes, they have priority. And that's one of the things we're going to do first is we're going to place them before we place anybody else. Uh, so they're going to be close to the pavilions, Pavilion 1, Pavilion 2, um, and possibly over by, well, we have extension cords as well. So, yeah. And that's why I gotta, I've got to limit them now because all the outlets are full. Okay, everybody good? Vendor mapping, um, and obviously you guys are you know, already di you know, discussing these type of things. You guys have anything to add to this? Basically what we're going to do um, is we've tried different uh, software uh, packages to actually line it out. Uh, so what I'm gonna do in, uh, with Renato and, and anybody that can help out, um, I'm going to take a, a section and just mark it off with a roller like we did last year, um, just so I can make sure I can fit everybody in there. Um, I'm going to start just marking those corners uh, as I have time. So when it comes to that weekend, granted, we're about three weeks away now, um, maybe four weeks away. Uh, but w w when we get to that point, it's not going to be uh, overwhelming on those last two days. So. Um, you, you'll start to see um, some corners just mark them off 15 feet. Um, and then we're going to, uh, I'll have those stakes with the numbers. Uh, Wendy will talk to you about the list that she already has. We're going to have those numbered. Uh, those stakes are going to correspond to uh, whatever those numbers are. There, people are going to come in. They're going to get a, um, a map. They're going to get the list of uh, vendors and the numbers, and they're going to get a letter from the Cecil Police Department, which says this is when you're in, 
and this is when you're out. Okay, we haven't done that in a couple years, all right, but with last year when there were eight people standing around, when one person loading the uh, trailer, and I was here till quarter to 10 waiting for them to, to leave, is like, okay, we gotta move them out. How do you guys feel, I'm trying to figure out, because that train guy takes up a lot of space, a lot of space. Um, and obviously we have a lot of food trucks coming in. Obviously we want to keep uh, the vendors off at second path. Does anybody have an idea of where we might be able to move this train guy? We or tried to get him across the creek last year, remember? Because it's all wide open, but he didn't want to do it. What was the reason he didn't want to? I'm trying to remember. No, I don't, no, I don't remember. He came down and looked at everything. Is mm -hmm. that, and then I discussed about just he came putting him off in that corner. Night or so before. He met us down here, and he, right. he, he pretty much picked out his spot. Well, he also has a game, and I think maybe he wants to have maximum people for coming to the game. People are going to come for they the train ride. They for the game, so he makes money on the game. That might be why he didn't want to be back in the corner, but... I kind of liked where he was last year, but I understand we need more space. It just felt like all the kids' stuff was centrally... Right around like, Pavilion, too. Yep. Spot. And I think that's good. Ideally, I, I'd love to keep that like that, too. I'm just trying to figure out how to do that because he cannot run that train around them trees across the stream. You know who else took up a decent amount of space that maybe you could move this year was Dragon Fly Balloons because they put all their hula hoops out into the middle of the field. That's mm -hmm. true. So we they, can re bump they really liked that because I think they sold a lot of hula hoops. But I think we could bump them closer to Pavilion 2, maybe on the other side of Pavilion 2. And that would free up more space by the For food. the food trucks. Because yeah. they were like kind of in the middle of the food. It, it was really ideal for them, I think, because yeah. all the food was there and then their balloons and... Um, Jason, I talked a little bit about this. Arden, and I talked a little bit about this. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with the food trucks around the perimeter again, um, for the most part. There's the stream, okay? We're gonna put them right around the edge there. Um, wait a minute, I'm sorry, there's the stream right there. I apologize. All right, so we're gonna put food trucks right, right around there, okay? We were thinking about putting the train guy in there. In the old days, the train wove through. I mean, do you remember the days that? Well, he had the whole. He went, I mean, he'd go around there, he would you know, yeah. he'd come back around, he'd, you know, he'd go everywhere. Apparently, because of insurance, they're not allowed to do that anymore. So he's gotta stay in a, in, in a central location. If we put these food trucks here, and the tables to attract more people over there so they can sit for a while. Yeah, that's going to limit our space. You know, pretty much the, the train guy was going to be, well, kind of in this area right here. Okay. Um, yeah, we went all the way to the, tele, to the light. To this one right here. Yeah. Yeah. If we can sneak him behind Pavilion 2, maybe run him up against that bridge up into this corner. You want him here? I'm thinking yes. That's and then. Yeah, the bounce houses were directly behind Pavilion 2, weren't they? Now we have a third bounce house, too. Right. So now we're going to be pushed out even more. But I think we had a gap here. We did. We had a gap there where I think we can just move the bounce houses down a little bit. Okay. And keep the train guy in the corner from Pavilion 2 over to the bridge. He wants that's, that's going to cut down his space a little bit, but he should still have enough room to operate in there. You want, okay, so you want the train guy in right around in, in this area right here? I, I wouldn't go past the corner of the concrete on the Bomb Pavilion too because what do you we're going to need bounce house room. Where are the? Where were the? Animals? And and the airbrush guy goes there as well. The animals were like the all the way up. The by animals the, were all the way up by the by gate. The we can push them. Lot. No, because the fire department goes against the gate. But they were behind. They were behind Pavilion One, right, Arden? You're yes. right there. Yeah. Well, the the, uh, the petting. Petting zoo. Petting yeah, zoo. that went from the. Um, right about from the parking lot in, because she was one of the last ones in. Came she came right behind me all the way. Yep, that was a. Yeah, and they they need a decent. Did it stink too bad? Mm, well, it's okay. I wonder if we can push them across the stream and do the pony rides I, over we, there. We just Did you ask that? I wonder if they go for that. Oh no, he didn't want the animals. They have to drive those trucks away. over, and I, we, those truck oh, those right. those bridges aren't aren't yeah, designed for that. And he didn't want the animals away from everything. But yeah, no. So he pretty much has to stay there and let because of the shade. I think most of that was shaded too. I was gonna say we have more room over here where the ambulances park, but they're up against the road. You know, right. I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, yeah. 
And the boy scouts are behind. Something. Yeah, the boy scouts are behind the um, basketball. Plus, cars are coming in and out there. Well, boy scouts are going to be in the basketball court. Yeah, but they sent the tents up yeah. behind. Yeah, but that's going to be back here. So we have to keep the animals there. I'll walk down the light and see how much room. If we, if he can maneuver right by the bridge area and keep it right there, we bump the bounce houses down. Yeah. And then you keep all the vendors up top, bring them down, and then circle in the outfield. Right, because we were going to go vendors around here. We've got the white tent, the Washington Federal tent there, and we're going to go vendors there, and then another row of vendors there. And even though Adam said don't do it, we're going to, we're going to face a, a row of vendors facing inside here. So it's going to be one row there facing out, and then two rows of vendors there. What if we put a row in front of the food trucks? Over here. Keep the food trucks here and then just run a, run a vendor straight across the top, right above them, right around the court. One of the things I'm, I'm concerned about is how do, we, how do we have, what's going to be the flow of people? You know, where are they going to naturally, I mean, when, when they're on the path, they, they naturally go by the batting cage. So, you know, Venice Presbyterian, you know, they, they see them. Then they come down here, all right? They have the choice of going up, okay, or down. And what I was going to do here is start the vendors here to go along the stream so we can avoid that. That's where the um, slanted slope. Yeah, it, yeah, but it's up in the middle, too. What it's there, we, too. We could put, there like certain we could put the train the guy in the middle. In like, here? Like, is there certain people that have to be near kind of a to slope. electric? Or yeah, yeah those, those I'm going to put them on either side. Yeah, but you're going to be right in between all the vendors. So the, we're still using that for vendors, right? Right by Pavilion Two, that V all the way up. And oh, okay, so you're lining both sides. So the alpacas, yeah. well, the alpacas are going to be right there, and the mice are right the bottom, there. Yeah, you're not doing the bottom half because that's sloped as well. Right. I wasn't going to put any anything here, and I was going to put okay. a food truck across there, which means that would point it towards here. I was going to have vendors along the stream and then up the path. You see what I mean? Oh yeah. Okay. Similar to what I'm going to do up here, I'm going to take like vendors that go along the fence line like we did last year and then bring them down. We, we were able to fit eight more booths up there doing it that way. And, yeah. and granted, it worked out because that grass was so soft, it's a lot better now. Yeah. But <clears throat> Is that flat enough up there? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's got a little, a little dip into it. But there's a drain up there. Um, I'll see if Bill can put some more dirt in there before. I, I don't want it too soft because it will have the same. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it now because we're too probably too close all right so we'll put no escape where they were last year right here yep and then you do we, where do we want the rock climbing wall do we want it steph right where we I had it last year where they can get in and out easily yeah they needed well i guess we have them all yeah, day this year day. so that's don't different. we have two days yeah we yeah. have okay. them all, all day for two days this year so maybe that he do we want to keep them a billion too or do you want to keep them up high where they were I just keep them where they were. That looked hard to maneuver. That looked That's like what I was thinking. Because he, yeah, really in in <laughs> he's got the gate, and we can pull those uh, uh, pipes out right there. He can back in there. Yeah. I mean, we might even be able to have enough room there. What if we put the train guy up in that corner? I was going to say, are we using anything over there by the last pavilion, that the grass area? Pavilion three, no. But that's a long walk. Over here. If See, I could tie everything in, though, we could, you know, we could put the train over. I don't know. There's a long walk. As we found out with... Uh, um, yeah, community. The beer, it's hard to get people over. Even with miners, you know, miners uh, or a historical society, they don't want to go back to their own pavilion because we can't get people over there. It's like, think of something to attract people over there. We, get, we had signs up there. We said, you know, that's where you can go over and sit. Very few people went over there. That's out of the flow. Again, that's with the flow. They're out of the flow over there. You we'll know. Put a bounce house over if there. If you were going to put the train over there, there I'd say just What if we put the, the toddler kids. bounce house over there? It's over there. Over by Pavilion Three. I think people aren't going to see it. How like the kids are like all over that one bridge. What about putting Historical Society in Pavilion Three, and uh, the train guy right next to him? Because the parents would come over with the kids, they'd be on the train, and then they doesn't I mean, that put him across the creek, and he didn't want to cross the creek? Yeah, that's true. And the Historical Society, they didn't like. I mean, they were kind of. Well, can we put the Historical Back Society up with the Boy Scouts? Can they put a tent next to the Boy Scouts up by the bathroom? I don't see why not. There's room there. 
and, more people. And then the ambulance was, I think, was sitting there too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Just so you know, there's a changing face in the historical society. So there's going to be some new people that haven't been, you know, uh, involved. So you know, we can talk to them and see if they'll they'd like I that. Remember, Boy Scouts discussing with us about putting not Boy Scouts historical society. Well, about them putting up a tent last year. And they were selling popcorn and fundraiser stuff. Right. Um, the right. Cub we can put the historical society right, you know, right up there with them. I think the Cub work. Scouts were right in there. Okay, right, or excuse me, right there, yeah. right next to the bathroom. Okay, if Brett will back that uh, escape uh, trailer there, or even back it in that way, we we still have a space. Now I've got to allow everybody to park. You know, I mean I. I we got room on the other side too. I mean, they're only right across. I mean, well, there's still plenty of room, and then we put the rock climbing wall, and the and EMS. See, we've yeah. got EMS in there too, yeah. and that is a big space. I mean, it, it's just a matter of you're catching people coming out of out of this parking lot. Okay, you're catching people coming out of Public Works and the the Venice parking lot down here. They're going to come in into the north lot and drop people off. Well, that rock climbing wall so tall, people know it's there and they can see it, you know. And that was that thing was busy last year, wasn't it? Real busy. I mean, people that was, a, that it, was yeah. a huge attraction. Yeah. The the map and the identifier is going to help out tremendously. Okay. You know, it's like when you go to Kennywood and you say, "I'm here and I want to go over there. Mm -hmm. This is how I get there." You know, and that's I mean that's Wendy's idea, and I think it's a great idea. All right, well let's let's keep it kind of like what we had last year. Walk, I think the rock wall. Ambulance, we can put historical society, Boy Scouts, No Escape Mobile, line the vendors up, food trucks in the food court again. Okay. And then we're gonna we're gonna have to work. Uh, I'm gonna have to go down and, and take a look at uh, Pavilion Two. If that train guy can set up there instead of in this corner, because we may need the space for the additional food trucks. How many trucks do we have? Thirteen. Well, we well, have nine, trucks. I would call, food trucks. Yeah, five, we're going to need that space. Yeah, five are like sweet trucks where he can actually, doesn't have to put them in the food court area. He can kind of, uh, it, it, did the donut one? The donut, she's a vendor, but she does the donuts in she her tent. She just has a yeah. can, of, like a. Like yeah. we were talking yeah. about putting her but in the courtyard. did she come bring, is hers in here? I don't remember seeing it. What's her name? Uh, <clears throat> Cookies and Candies by Christy. Dylan's Quest for the Cure. Oh, she have that Frost Ferry. Let's do that. Laurel Highland Baked Goods and the Pie Place. I don't remember seeing the donut one, but I oh, swear they said they sent it in. I have it at home. I, I mean, what was her name? That's what I said. I got it written at home. Wasn't she going beside the um, State Farm? Yeah. Is that what was going beside State Farm? I'm trying to think. Tea? Wasn't that D&T? Is that what that is? Okay. See, I, I, so that's the donut place. I just have food vendors. She didn't give me. Here, what, just a minute. I can smell donuts. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> so who will be there Friday? I mean, oh. I was going to try to take the morning off at least because that's I mean last year that's when we needed we need to make sure everybody goes into their spot well, that we're gonna the big be. thing is like we're, vendors are lined up at three o'clock they're lined that's up when they're the allowed time, ready to set up, up and then it goes yeah. on into the night of getting oh set. yeah fair donuts okay yeah. I see that okay so, so what we've, time do you need oh, yeah, help straight fair donuts. like you want us there before three then or we I'm, need I'm taking off I'm gonna be here all day Okay. We need the some of us need to be here to set up, um, spray paint the lines, and use markers. Um, and then, yeah, three o'clock, we're going to need to be escorting people, telling them where they're headed, where their marker is, where their numbers is. See, last year we didn't have anyone to, to direct them once they got in because they didn't know where to go. Right. So that's so key. It's not even you know. I know that um, was like the one thing that we really. I mean, we spent all day with Bob, Bob <clears throat> and Phil that you know with the Your buddy. gator, and the gator. Oh. <laughs> Marking everywhere, you know what I mean? And um, I've never seen Arden mad before. Woo! <laughs> that guy's just being taped. <laughs> no. No. Builder Bob helped, right? They set up a tent. Yeah. yeah. 
They were doing things in other, I mean, in the park, but they weren't like doing the lining and st stuff. That's that's what I was talking about. Were you said? <sighs> well, Bob Mikulski, um I think he likes doing it, and he he only he only wants to do it his way, and and that's where we so that, yeah. I I just I don't want to. I want him to step back, you know, and, yeah. but let's, let's ask. Yeah, right, because yeah, the, the more, more help, the better. I, I, it's, it's very, um, Barbara, it's, we're going to have sticks to the ground or no way. It's through. very frustrating. Before they was driving by and just painted on like the grass. Like in years past, I've been a vendor here for like right. 10 years now. You're going to have stakes up. They drive by, okay, 54. Yeah. Back in the it's day, like it, we were met by Glenn and another guy in, um, golf carts and they would escort you in the golf cart to your spot and say, this is it right here between these two markers, this is yours. And then they would drive off and get the next vendor. So two golf carts were escorting the whole, it made it so much easier because there's your spot. You know, you don't go try to find one that, oh, I like that one better. So, um, what time are those carts coming? What will it be coming like Friday that? after, uh, Friday morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it'll be a golf cart available to, yeah. To, they usually get here about 10. Follow me and just go. Yeah. They're about, they're here by 10. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, this, we have extra help. We should not turn it down. He's got um, the thing you well, push it. Well, what he does is he drives a cart. We, they they have the uh, um, the wheel that ticks off the time, and then he's he's got one with a trigger on it, and you just you spray it, and then you move on. But he can't walk very well, and that's Certainly. why I'm asking him to back up. Um, it would, I mean, because we, we've got so much to do. I mean, we were able to get uh, up to um, the concession stand, well, up to the, the batting cage done, but I never even got out into the ball field, and that's where I uh, started having problems. And you wanted to get over and mark the parking lot too, which you didn't get to do because you still and wasn't able to get this done. Jim Bachalk is going to help us over there. He's committed f for that, so he's going to be there the whole time um, to park cars. So once, once that first round of cars gets parked, then there's going to be you know people in and out and people know pretty much where to um, park. Just so you know, as a side note, we put another 20 ton of gravel over there, uh, so it, it should be pretty clean. Uh, it should be good parking with the shuttle. Uh, people are not going to be walking you know through Dollar General uh, parking lot and then through the weeds and that type of stuff. Um, but the same access as we've had in the past. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. We we could use any help that we can get between eight eight and and two. That'd be awesome. Thank you, Tom. Thank Thanks, you. Tom. It's huge help. We I'll, appreciate any thoughts you have. <laughs> I also uh, want to recommend some cones. Um, we got them pretty late last year or late in the parking. If you, the way I kind of did it last year is I sectioned those, you know, top like 10 feet, the top and the bottom so cars can get in and out. People were starting to block that and I had to yell at them to get out of there, you know, but. Just um, ask Gordon's nephew. <laughs> Keep in mind, we have those stakes from uh, Trail of Treats. Yeah. The hole in it, we got the rope. We can, we can rope it off. We just have to do it Friday morning as opposed to. Well, I can tell you now, like, there ain't enough rope because people were parked halfway down, you know, Zemiska's, you know, on the top and the bottom. Like, yeah. when it got busy, you know, they, they were parked pretty deep back there. But it, it worked as long as everybody left the bottom 10 feet and the top 10 feet. They come in you know, on the top, go in and park, and then when they leave, they come out the bottom. So as long as those two pathways stay open 10 feet on each side you know even if we make a little sign do not park you know or if we need this you know, i don't know if he wants us to spray paint but at least the cones and some kind of sign you know that says hey don't park below the cones you know or above the cone um because that way people can get in and out i caught a couple people last year and good thing i was just so often to be there you know where uh they were blocking those at those pathways and that would have blocked a whole bunch of people in do we need to have somebody down there well, that's what well, he was talking about. He said, "Has Jimmy will be down there." Is that enough? Like one? Yeah, yeah. He used to always do it too. Jim's always been the parking guy. <laughs> yeah, as long as you keep the, the top and the bottom open, it flows very nice. Yeah. You know, and ninety-five percent of people follow what every other car is doing, but then you got that couple other people who just want to do what they want to do. You know, so and, and with the shuttle, we can get people in and out a lot faster. So you're gonna you're, you're gonna see cars coming in and, and out a lot. 
One of the things we're going to have to do, though, is we're going to have to keep uh, Jim fed and watered. <laughs> I can do that. I, I, I ran, I made numerous trips over to that parking lot with that golf cart, I will tell you. Okay, food trucks. Uh, obviously, we just talked about where they will be. Um, we have a lot of food trucks, a lot of food vendors. Uh, Wendy, do you have anything to add? No, um, I think we're in good shape. We've got some, a nice selection. I think it should help us then have a little less being busy in the concession stand. So, you know, we can get out. And The other thing, though, is Glenn cannot help in the concession stand this year. So. Okay. On stage, um, I have pretty much everything all set. Um, I have one open time spot, uh, time spot on Sunday. I'm still trying to fill with a dance class or you know something of that nature. I did have an Irish dance one. Um, they were very excited to come in, but they have a competition that same day. So, what is uh, that time frame you're calling open? I believe I gave you uh, most recent um, agendas or itineraries. 245 to 3.30. Everybody get one of these. So what time's the Zhang? That's what you gave me for Zhang. Oh, Zhang's finishes at 2. Hang they're, on. they're only going to be a half an hour. Yeah, they put them in yeah I gave them a 45-minute time slot. Because they're set up and take, take down. Because that dragon da dance, I think, is a little bit elaborate. All right, Noms is 12.30 to 1 on Saturday. I could have swore I had this conversation with somebody. I thought the Zhang's confirmed for 130 to 215. Yes. All right, 130 to 215. And is... this isn't the latest one I have. Did you give us? That's the one you just. That's the one you just sent me, one. That was just on Sunday. Yeah, I, so don't have, I don't have that. Call. That's the only one we'll have to change. Zhang's is that 130 time slot to 215, and then I have um, that other open, just one more open time slot. City. Did not get enough interest. For, from Canon Mac? No, from, from the board. Oh, I thought we all passed that. No, we no, never passed. And then I asked again, and everybody was kind of him hawing around, and I didn't get us uh, for certain yes. Band, we right? just did on We just, just did got that. Yesterday. Okay. Yesterday. All right, so I'm going to go back to him and tell him that we're not doing the Steel City. That's no. off the. Okay. I'll get him. No, they needed a month. They needed a month, or I'm sorry, two months ahead of time. And See, last I remembered, you said you were still going to ask them to pencil us in. No. That's last I remember. Right, that's yeah, what I, I remember, like too. The, the last meeting, I specifically remember us all sitting here being like, let's do it. Yeah. You can roll the tape. But we also I, I, think, I, I, think that, I think that was the case until we got the cost for $800 for 20 minutes, which is ridiculous. Which I would rather use for that extra bounce house. Yeah. They wanted 800 bucks for but 20 minutes. Right. I agree with you. Yes. Am I, okay, yes. I see. I thought the whole thing was that nobody got a hold of the candidate and, oh, there and, and it wasn't going to be 20. like a back and forth, minutes. and that's why we didn't That's insane. I mean, we were waiting to see if the Canamac responded, if they were going to like interact they with them, and we they just, had Yeah, Canamac just got back to us. So they so. just said they're going to send 45 right. students yesterday. Going around the park? Okay. That's what I thought, too. If I can at least get just a half hour, 45 wish, minutes out I wish they would walk around the park and do it. Oh, that would be cool. That's how they got famous. Well, not famous, but doing Steeler games. Hmm. Okay, moving on. Children's events. Uh, obviously, we have all these pretty much laid out. Do you need, or is there anything you need to add, Stephanie? Yes. Uh, so last year, and this isn't an event, but this is related, sorry, related to the pumpkin painting. Last year, somebody donated paints to us, um, but this year we don't have it, so we need to approve to, like, buy paints for the pumpkin painting. Okay. Yeah, because you used it all up. Yeah, we used it all. We used everything donated, and then we bought more because we ran out of it. So, um, I mean, I didn't print out anything specific, but they have, like, the big jugs of paint that we could order, and I just feel like maybe, like, $150 worth of paint and glitter. If, That's all? If maybe 200 if we have. Then we wouldn't have to run back out. I'm trying to avoid that. Can you send me an email uh, listing that, and then I can have something as backup for it to request the check? Sure. Okay. Can we back up on the schedule for one minute? You just sent me an email that said NOMS is 1230 to 1, but yet, oh, uh, okay, that's NOMS on Saturday. Yeah, the NOMS and Zhang's. Okay, Zhang's on Sunday at 130 to 215. 
So then you're saying you have 215 to 330 whenever Matt starts, correct? As an open session. The open spot that I have left is Sunday, 245 to 330, because 330 is when the DJ starts, correct? Yes. Okay. And he can start earlier if we don't. Okay. I was just going to say that. Can he start any earlier? That way yeah. you fill yeah. that spot. And even, George, um, I'm blanking on his name. Who's the sound guy? Is it not George. Gary. Gary. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher his name for the rest, until the day of. Um, he even plays a little bit of music in between. So, you know, there's no rush. Like, hey, you know, whenever, you know, he can set up is great. That way he can start tearing down. But, yeah, I'm trying to fill that last time slot. Um, other than that, um, I'm good to go. Band has confirmed. Stephanie, did you happen to reach out to Bedner's about additional pumpkins if we should, because what happened last year? Is How many did we order? Do we know? We have four. We have 400 coming, and I did. I reached out to Melanie today about um, like setting aside up to 300 um, for purchase and to get us some pricing information. So I'm just waiting for her to get back. Because I that. think last year we went through 800. Seven. Did we get 400? I, I got, I got 410 alone on my truck. <laughs> he just remembers. <laughs> <laughs> did you get them at Swoops or did you get them? No, that was um, Simmons. Simmons. They're, they're always a the backup over there. They have tons yeah. of those. But if they have the ones to purchase for us, I, maybe we can try and arrange so that they deliver them all on the that, same day. That's exactly what I was thinking. And they are delivering Friday. Vendors did deliver last year. Sorry, I turned this off. Yeah. Vendors did deliver last year. They brought the um, um, truck down, and um, uh, Mark Segretti brought the forklift down, just lifted them off, put them right by yeah. Pavilion 2. So right we can morning. do the same thing. We, we have two years' worth of data. We know how many roughly we're going to need, so if we can get them all ahead of time that'd be great okay if we could what's the potential of getting a forklift first thing sunday morning if we can unload two of those pumps and keep 400 by the concession stand so they don't disappear by pavilion two we only release 400 pumpkins on saturday and then we do another 400 on sunday could he get that forklift and drive that as over or here's, here's the way the unions work if they send anybody out it's got to be in twos in a minimum of two hours so that's uh, two hours per person on a sunday morning that's going to be time and, uh, a half. Time and a half what aren't do correct me if i'm wrong we already have helpers coming for saturday and sunday they were doing trash and stuff last year yeah that's that's they the parks they people those are parks people okay okay they work at public works but they're parks people they cut the grass they they plant the flowers they keep everything nice and neat so they so. can't run the forklift essentially no. okay i think it's probably pretty safe right yeah. we ask the vendors to leave all their stuff there so the pumpkin should be okay. well i'm just worried about if we go through the first 400 on Saturday and they start tearing into the second 400. We'll just have to we tell keep everybody them to stop after. And we have to watch because the people did try to take two pumpkins and I mean. Well, they also left a bunch of pumpkins. What we did two years ago was um, I made three trips. You know, I went to Simmons twice and um, and that's how we stayed up with That's That's when we knew how many we were going to go through. So we got that 700 to 800 figure. Uh, Duplicated that again last year, so I'm thinking maybe we would just go after 800 right away. We're going to have a police presence overnight yeah, on, on Saturday with the lights we're going to be on. Um, I I don't think anybody's going to steal them after the fact, but it's just having them there for when the you know kids show up. I would say if we can get them all at once. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. that's um, just my thought. We'll just talk to the volunteers and say like you know these they came in big crates last year. Like these two crates are just for Saturday. These two are just for Sunday. We just get some tarps and maybe yeah. cover them up. So what are you saying? Once they're done for Saturday's allotment, they're done? I, yeah. I say yeah. 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 But I would maybe a lot, maybe we a lot more to Saturday. Do like 500 on yeah. Saturday, 300 on Sunday? Yeah, because yeah, okay. there's a Steeler game Sunday. And we should have a donation no. thing down Steeler by There's no Thursday. Steeler game on Sunday. Steeler game's on Thursday. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. That worked out this year. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do 500 pumpkins um, on Saturday. I think, yeah, we did 800 last year, and there were still kids looking for more. So let's do 300 on Sunday. We'll have to get a tarp or something and keep them covered is all, mm -hmm. just to make sure we save at 300 for Sunday. Okay, volunteers. Uh, Wendy's already put the post out. Well, we used to get mascots. Uh, oh, oh, that's under children's events. I'm sorry. Mascots. Go ahead, Barb. 
Okay, so we have the Chick-fil-A cow is coming Saturday between 11 and 2. And then I told... Just, he, you don't know, like, is he coming for those three hours or any time in between 11 and 2? Any time between 11 okay. and 2. Yeah, they wouldn't tell, but for a couple hours. Okay. And so I'm going to check with everybody to see if they need, like, one of us to help them at all, or they usually bring somebody. Yeah. So the Texas Roadhouse Armadillo, I told them to come, like, after like two o'clock on Saturday or Sunday and then she's supposed to let me know they are coming which time they're going to have the Washington Wild Thing is coming both days but they also have another event on Saturday so it'll be like later in the day Saturday and then Sunday and then the Eaton Park Cookie said that they're getting back to me supposedly by but they haven't but they did I did like bug them and then they said oh yeah we're I'll get back to you so we didn't get turned down by them so we have three, potentially four mascots. And also uh, Pittsburgh Passion. Arden, do you want to um, touch on that? Yeah, from what uh, she supposedly sent her application in yesterday, but uh, they're definitely, she just texted me and said, we're in, we're in, count us in. So they're coming in as a non-pay vendor, but they're going to, uh, the team, I don't know how many are going to be there, but they're going to be there the whole time, Saturday and Sunday. So Dan will say, maybe we should keep it over by the kids' things, maybe to draw the kids over there, because they were talking about, they're bringing their own, whole setup, but um, they do like a like a course where they show the kids how to run the ball and stuff through the thing, so I think they might like that. But um, th they said they're in. Um, no word back about awesome. um, mm -hmm. Franco Harris, so, but. Um, where, where is that gonna be set up at? Um, it, well, I haven't told them where to set up yet, but because we were thinking about if we were gonna go do that micro beer, remember we were talking about maybe doing that, and then maybe set them near there. But kids near beer? I don't think that's a good idea. Remember, we were talking about like a, a beer truck that they're if, if we yeah. were going to do that. But all right, tell me, tell me what this, this passion is supposed to be doing with kids. Uh, the way that they explained it, Penny explained it to me was they put up cones and then the players kind of show kids like they give them the ball and show them how to pivot and go around things like and kids like it. Um, I'm now, not the sure passion is the female football players. Female, yes. Yeah. I know there would be like I think there's four. So when I was talking to her, she said there was four of them. Two of them were actually were, um, a part of the world championship teams yeah, for women's football. Big deal. Like, the, the, the Japan team is here now, and they're entertaining them while they're in town. So she said three or four of them, and then Penny will be there the whole entire time too. So uh, they probably need. I don't know. They're gonna have their. They're gonna have a booth set up, and um, I think they might need another 10, 15 feet yeah. at the most. Nothing, you know, too too big, um, where they can set up and just do a couple little demonstrations with the kids. I'm sure we there, we can put maybe some room around Pavilion Two away from the train area. Not necessarily, okay, and that's why I want to talk about this because we're we're almost at 130 uh, vendors in there, okay. Um, we need to think through exactly where the, the spaces are going to be. Now we could put them over in the grassy area there, but there again, how do we get them across that bridge? All right, this is going to be. I mean, this would probably be a good area right there because, I mean, we've, we're going to have vendors there. We're going to have two rows of vendors there. We're going to have the food trucks here, train guy there. Are we putting bounce, bounce houses. houses there? Yeah. They're, they're like, you know where I was last year next to the tree? Yeah, the, the, over here. The, the petting zoo ended right before the pavilion so, so we all have, that area behind me was empty yeah we have a little bit of space year. on the other side of the walk on the bridge okay this is pavilion one here yep that's pavilion two there so right underneath the tree yep okay i had the the petting zoo was right back in here right yes. there, there was nothing from the pavilion behind me all the way over just vendors along the walk well that's okay that's one of the places i was going to suggest putting the the some of the bounce houses okay so you want to put them there, the passion there? If we have enough room for the bounce houses behind Pavilion 2, we can just put them right on the other side of the walk right here. If this is a flat enough area, I think. Here, point, point. Right here. There's a flat enough area right there. But I'm, I'm putting these. Here. Oh. Capping what if? Right in this little area right here. They only need like 10, 15 well, feet. This is more than enough. Now. You, All right. uh, like, uh, like he was stating, this is Pavilion 1 here. Mm -hmm. So this is where the animals were. Here's where the fire department was. Yep. Then we have our tree here. 
And yeah. then we have this is all going to be empty because we're not are we put we're not putting vendors there because of the hillside right here, right? Not there. Okay. We're trying to get those. What I was going to do is That's I was going to move them down further here so I could fit more. See, because that, that's a hill, I'm not, that lower path, that's all a sloped hill. Yeah, that's this. That's where the pet search lady had a meltdown. That's where uh, people um, had, you know. You know had I put him on my list, but you're right, he doesn't have them on his. I did I remind him. Push them all down by the, you know, head up, kind of like the courtyard. Up there on top. You know what I mean? Okay, let, me, let me see that. Well, I'm going to do the courtyard up here, where it's going to yes. be an L here. I was going to do something very similar to that, where, you know, Possibly coming from here. Now, that's fine. That's a spot right there. That tree, we can work with that tree. But I was going to go from there up into there and then up into Pavilion 1. Just so I can get more booths in there. Hmm. I mean, I'll do what you want. It's just I just, I'm not sure about that area. I know that hillside is against that path, and I don't know if it, how much it flattens out right there. Well, that's the bad part, part of the, uh, the slant. I and to, put people on that side, but I can't do that. And to be honest with you, I thought we were, last year we kept that open in case the ambulance needed to get, and that's where I was driving the golf cart, was on that back area. The ambulance was right down here. Yeah, I thought if they needed an emergency to get through, I thought we kept an area open for them. Here's what they do. They, um, sorry, I should be talking to the microphone. One of the things that they'll do is they'll keep an ambulance on standby out in the parking lot, and they'll, they'll commit the one for the event in here. They did it touch a truck. They did it with uh, um, Community Day. Uh, they actually did it with – no, they didn't. They didn't do it with uh, Port Cherry. All right, so I have a picture of where – I mean, is everybody okay with the positioning there? Yeah, anywhere we can put them. They have, they're only going to need maybe, an, you know, 10 feet for their booth and maybe an additional 10 feet. It's been a while since we put this many vendors in. Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, we're, we're going we're gonna to fit them in. But I just want to be very – I don't want anybody coming in and say, oh, I thought we were going to do, do it this way. I, I want everybody to be on the same page so when we go pull the trigger on this thing, you know, it's, yeah. it's done. This could be like a complete no because I don't know enough about baseball, but could you put them near the baseball field and have them do their demonstrations on the actual field? It might be dusty. It's going to be dusty. Oh, okay. But here's the problem. We're going to have vendors facing out. Facing out. And I'd like to leave it open so people are just naturally attracted in there. The only time anybody's going to see them in the baseball field is if they come down the walkway and then... Well, that might not the be bad. About tables the, and chairs, too. The T-Mobile truck takes up that whole that fence line. That corner right there. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Remember, we, 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 we positioned it so that we were driving people past the T-Mobile truck and into the outfield. Right. We put them on the corner right there. Right. And then gonna, you could even put a couple, I'd say, and that, well, that's where the sausage guy used to sit right there, too, all the time. Tell me about the tables and chairs. What were you thinking? Said chairs. Well, remember, we talked about getting more tables so people had a place to sit and eat and get in chairs. Okay, food food trucks are going to be over there. You want tables and chairs in the in the infield, so they take their food and go all the way back there. Why not? About that? Like over by the tree. It won't there. matter Nobody if it's dusty because they're just walking in and sitting down to eat. Didn't someone say putting tables between the food trucks? Did someone say that last week? I was, I was going to put them randomly uh, through there so people could just find a place to sit. Um, because we, before we had that little tent there, and we had tables underneath it, and it was like, it was just kind of sitting there. And I didn't even know what it was for at first, because, um, and I don't remember a lot of people using that. That's why I was thinking if we line the tables uh, closer to the, the food vendors, people will have a place to sit. Well, I don't think we had the tables and chairs under the tent, because at first the tent was in the wrong place, and it didn't get moved till the next that morning. Over here. That tent was over here. I'm talking okay, about you're the talking little, the other one. Oh, the other one. There. Yeah. The other tent by the food court had people under it all the time. Yeah. People were trying to get away from the shade. They were trying to get into the shade. So ideally, we need to keep that there into the food court and then add more tables either in front of the food trucks or around the tent area to add additional because there were a lot of people just standing around. And even when we had one random table sitting out in the middle of the field. People were on it eating, you know, and then the garbage cans were right there too, so. Okay, um, we're gonna have Washington Federal's tent right there. There's mm -hmm. gonna be a bunch of tables and chairs under there, okay? 
or putting the, the food trucks over here. What I was suggesting is putting tables and chairs there so they didn't have to come from there, come over here, and walk back. Chances <clears> are they'll buy more food. They'd spend more time over there. You know, that type of place to sit. Mm -hmm. I agree, and that's why we have the additional tables coming in. Um, no, we should be good with that. Um, but that, that tent, I feel, needs to stay down there. That additional tent, that smaller tent. That's coming from Behringer's. Is it on the con contract? Okay. Around there. Especially because since we're making even more room, if we're going to kick that train guy out of that other area, that's going to add a ton more space yeah. for food trucks and for tables. Yeah. He asked me today um, if it was going to be the same place. I said yes. So I'll tell him tomorrow. No, we're moving. Let me, yeah, if we get out of here before, when there's still daylight, I want to walk down there and see if we can get. Why don't you all, want all you guys go down there if you can? All right. So you all, you know, put your minds together and decide what you want. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Okay. Ideally, I like to keep them by Pavilion too, just tucked up a little tighter against, you know, that walkway. Okay. We'll see what we can do. All right. All right. Volunteers. Um, can of Mac, Stephanie? Um, the goal is that the post for the students will go up on Monday for signups. Um, Wendy, thank you again for making me the flyer to give to them. Welcome. And the Facebook post is already out. Um, if anybody would like to volunteer, just find the link on the Facebook group. Um, you can sign up. Is it broken down into like concession and pumpkin and like it was last year? Which I have to send it to you, Jack, to, in order for you to get it posted on the website too. Right. I'll send it out concession stand all of us full menu no glenn <coughs> no glenn so glenn was running the grill a lot right yeah mm -hmm. all right so we need another grill master yeah <laughs> <laughs> what about the uh, i said grill master not just some schlup now uh, before oh. we get into the motions we have to approve and everything just one thing i wanted to tell everybody i don't know if anybody you looked at the south fayette community day stuff but Paula had a really nice list of like everybody they had there. And then like she even had the food vendors mixed in. So like everybody was on the list. And then she had a little icon beside it showing which one were food vendors. So I'm kind of copying that format, but I'm putting everybody on here. I'm putting our bands on here. I'm putting like Behringer's, Mike the Balloon guy. So everything that is associated is on this list. And then I'll have little icons. Once again, this is music. You know, this is actual food. Uh, I'm looking for one to use for the sweets. So then, and it's, it'll be in alphabetical order, and it's one I'm actually posting then everywhere. Because I figure out of everything, this will probably get shared the most. Would it be easier to separate them as, instead of just putting the icons, just do music, boom, list out your music, and then... Um... Oh, it's alphabetical. Okay. Whatever's easiest for you. It's alphabetical. So... Um, Hers was really nice. I mean, it doesn't mean that, you know, at some point we won't, won't point out, hey, this is, our, oh, this is our music people, this is, but I, I think this is something that's likely to get shared a lot. And that's one of the reasons why I was going to do this in this format. Now, these numbers I have on this list right now, if you get it, isn't the numbers Jack has on the list in order to assign the spots. This is just numerically so we know how many vendors we are actually recognizing is or Perfect. entertainment we're recognizing okay so i'll send this out to everybody when i have it done stephanie remind me bearing jurors did we cut them a check by any chance is there to hold that spot for that day for the bounce houses or anything uh, no but okay we you're gonna are you nodding yes at me? We did. <laughs> I just want to make sure before I see this amount that this is, um, everything is good on this. That's all. I didn't think we had, but I could be wrong. So if we find something out. Hold on one second. I, the, I got hit with that $1,600 check and I didn't know where it came from. All right, Behringer's. Oh, no, 5850. We haven't okay. sent them anything yet. So that's our, this is going to be our current total for them. Right. Okay. And this includes the toddler bounce house? Yes, yes. This is the toddler bounce house. We're going to add a third bounce house specifically designed for kids. What is it, like up to age three, four, five years old? Yeah. Okay. Because I notice a lot of three-year-olds are kind of getting run over and some of the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Um, but this should help alleviate that a little bit, make, you know, parents feel a little more comfortable. Um, it's a very awesome little um, 
toddler one. There's no roof on it, so it's wide open. Everybody can see in it. They can take their pictures and everything. It's really, it's really, really cool. So, okay, is everybody ready to start flowing through these? Yep, yep, yep. Jack, if there's anything I need to hold off on, let me know. Okay, I think everything, uh, everything that you have uh, needs to be okayed, and I will put them in for payment tomorrow. Okay. Okay, we're going to approve the new uh, invoice from Behringer's that adds additional tables and the toddler bounce house. The new total to approve is $5,850. This is for both days. This has three bounce houses, um, our tents, um, tables, uh, everything. So, need a motion? Motion. Motion by Jason. Second. 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 We're going to do Steph second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Six zero pass. Okay. Approve the contract from uh, Back Roads. Um, this is one of our bands. Um, they're five hundred dollars for two hours. Double check it. I have that already. Filled. Did we hear about them before or no? no. I like I just popped out of nowhere. Yeah. What happened to the Timothy Earl band? They never got back to me. Okay. Uh, they did get back to me and said they were booked. Was when did they get back to you? That they were what, huh? not doing it. Uh, they were already booked. Oh. I've only been trying to email them for three months now. I uh, were they booked three months ago? You should ask that question. It's a groupie. It's a groupie. <laughs> All right. Um, $500 for two hours. Uh, I'll make a motion. I need a second. Second. Barb, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, six, oh. uh, we're going to approve the contract for Black Dog Hollow. I believe they were they a thousand, Jack, for yep. two hours. Yeah, thousand. Oh, you see it right above the red. There it is, right here. Wow. There it is. Yep, thousand dollars for two hours. Motion. When? Can I, can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> My boss was in this band years ago. Enough said. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Motion by Wendy. I need a second. Second. Arden, second. All in favor? Aye. Passes 6-0. Uh, contract for my so-called 90s band. Uh, they are $500 for two hours. They are going to play on Sunday. Uh, need a motion? Motion. Motion. Is that Steph motion? Yeah. Yep. Second? Second. Barb second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Pass 6-0. Okay. The uh, contract for the DJ to wrap up um, all the fall festival for Sunday um i will make a motion i need a second second jason second all in favor aye aye, aye. passes six zero. okay gary schwartz gary is our schwartz. speaker guy he does amazing he has a great setup it's a touch touch loud i could hear everything all the way down at dollar general park a lot but um, he does an amazing job. Um, he can even fill in for the couple, you know, 15 minutes here or there that needs, um, you know, where bands are setting up. He plays the music and stuff. So, Bill Tom. Approve the contract for Gary Schwartz, $2,000 for both days. Um, I'll make a motion. I need a second. Second. Jason, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 6 0. I do want to call your attention to one other thing. If you look at the uh, spreadsheet, we still have 5775. Out of that is going to come the signs and uh, other incidentals. Uh, so um, we're ahead of the game uh, where we were. It's not on the agenda. And you said, Jason, we should still be expecting we probably another 1250 at least coming yeah. in. How much? Yeah, because we already paid it. Center Mark's at least given 500. Okay. It could be more. Lagoni already committed 500, and my other coach friends would give 250. I think. I put that pay for the golf course again. That's what you did last year or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, here's here's what I have as far as commitments are concerned. Range gave us a thousand. Coleman Mitchell five hundred. Um, and well, you can see it all. Always safe. Bell Landscaping. Uh, Kenneth McMahon. McMahon. Kenneth a thousand. Um, the philanthropic organization. We have uh, Twin Twist. Cassiola's Twin Twist Gateway gave us the four thousand. We already paid the uh, uh, for the fireworks. Uh, Washington Health System, come all the way down, uh, NS Life, and then we have uh, Tazak, which we... Pillar to Post. Well, I, you know what? I had Pillar and Post in here. I took it out. Okay. All right, because it came in as Tazak, Inc. Do... Did it... Barb was, has what they want on their sign. Okay, perfect. And then Richie Metals came in today. And that's misspelled. 
Rich, yeah, it is. I, I apologize. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I had a question. She's tearing oh, into you tonight, isn't she? Uh huh. I deserve it. <laughs> did you fill out the application for PNC? <clears throat> no. Okay. I will. Thank you. I will <laughs> Thank you. Right. Sorry to make you work at night. No, I'm glad <laughs> we need to add no escape, right? Yeah, we do. Okay. Yeah. So we vote, vote to put that onto the agenda yep. for. Yep. Okay, I'm going to uh, make a motion to put this invoice in for No Escape Mobile for 890. Uh, I know it says 925, but his math is not right. Uh, we've requested twice now to get it the right number. We're going with what he has on here, which would be $890. This is for both days for them to set up. Um, I'm going to make a motion to put this on the agenda. I need a second. 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 Um, it, the, I know that they keep putting the wrong number on there, but the message that I have from him says that 925 is the number. So I don't know what like keeps happening, but like the text message that I had from him says that 925 is the correct number. Weren't they making a donation to or something part of Their that? Yeah, that's something. after the donation. They're, yeah. Yeah, you'll see the discount that he offers us plus a the donation um, towards our fall festival. So should we actually make that motion for the 925 and if it ends up coming in less than... Then that's good, but the, I just well, am going off the... So the checks need to be accurate. Um, that's the big thing, too, and we need to... Um, we need the invoice to show that too from them. Yeah. Well, Unless if you remember the first the invoice they gave us, yeah, back. It, well, they listed eight ninety, but it added up I'm to nine twenty five. Well, right. Then they flip flopped it on the second money, invoice. Like, yeah. And, and so when I talked to him, he said nine twenty five was the right number. They might be trying to do that. Just you know, pay the nine twenty five, and I'll cut you one fifty back. That's what I thought it was. So it's eleven fifty five. Is is. First hour at 180, escape room uh, 13 hours at $75. So <clears throat> I have 11, what, 1155? So 10% of 1155, right? And then $50 donation. I, all right, you, I mean. This is his rate that he sent. I know he keeps saying 925. It's your call. We're sticking with the 890. This is his rates. What do you want me to do? Steph? I would prefer you just do the 925 because <coughs> I have a text message from him saying 925. And the first time he issued the invoice, it added up to 925. He just wrote 890. And then the second time, it was like, I. I mean, I don't know what they're doing, but I just know that I have a text message from him that said 925. Okay, so we want to do 925 for both days. That's what we agreed from the original, even though his math is off here. Okay. We'll stick to okay. what the original. Um, I will need an updated invoice to get the, the check cut ASAP okay. from that. We'll just make sure we pound them for our donation. <laughs> All right. So uh, let me go back to this. Um, I'm going to make a motion for this invoice for No Escape Mobile for 925. Uh, I'll make a motion. I need a second. Second. Jason, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Six zero. Pass. Um, public comment on the invoice. No. Okay. Um, now I'm going to for approval of the 925 invoice for No Escape Mobile. I need a motion. 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 Jason, motion. I need a second. Second. Arden, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Six zero. Oh. You got all that, Wendy? Yep. Okay. And we need to do the same with, no, we've already approved the Triple Express. He just needs a check cut, right? Yes. That's already been approved. That's all good. That's all good. Is there anything else we are missing? Oh, the printing press. We want to take care of this tonight, Jack? Um, the signs? Yeah, just add that on to it. Uh, we just got that invoice. So, yeah, let's take it all. I'll okay. All the same time. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make a motion to add this to our agenda tonight from the printing press. These are the signs. We have 10 <coughs> signs for the fall festival. You're all staring at them right there. 
That's the invoice total. That's invoice total. Sorry, balance sorry. due is one seventy one twenty. Now, do we get a sales tax break? Yes. Because this is at seven percent, or I think six is in Washington. Plus, if we take the tax. In Allegheny County. That's probably. Anytime we do anything um, for Cecil Township, it's 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 a tax break, and if they need a, a certificate, I can send it to them. Okay. okay. That's one of the reasons things should go through me. Okay, so. So I can make sure that it's just saving uh, not a lot of money, but um, we're pinching every penny we can. Well, we still saved a lot of money over last year. We're still tax exempt. Okay. <clears throat> we have a 501c now, right? No. no. Yeah. Cecil Township, not not parks. Not us. So this would bring us down to 160 total, correct? We'll need an updated invoice with this as well. Okay. If you would please, if you want to vote on it, and then uh, just say pending the updated uh, invoice, that'd be fine. Okay. All right. I'm going to add this to our agenda today. The printing press would be $160 total, uh, pending the invoice. Um, I need a motion. Motion. Jason, motion. I need a second. Second. Steph, second. All, all, all okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm losing it here, guys. This is one of our longer meetings. Uh, I pass six zero. Okay, you got that, Wendy? Yep. Printing press approval for the invoice for $160. I'll make a motion. I need a second. 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 Oh. Uh, Jason, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, six, oh. Okay, that should be taken care of. Everything should be squared up then. Okay, even though it's not on the agenda, since we're on the fall festival, I think we need to decide about chairs. <sighs> We just approved the Behringers, so they would have to make a whole second invoice on that. So I guess our other option is, um, do we have access to chairs, Jack? We do. Okay. <clears throat> My suggestion is that we have our volunteers help put the chairs out and pick them up afterwards. Before everything starts, we have like an early volunteer slot. Well, we're actually, we're probably end up setting them up Friday. Yeah. yeah. Well, to be honest with you, we can even set them up Friday. It'll just be after. We'll need maybe a volunteer hour for like cleanup or an hour and a half after maybe. It saves us that money too. So Say that uh, again. If we're trying to save money. It would save us money too. $600. What was 600 did we say? Stuff? It's $3 five, per chair. I so think it's 5 Depending on you know, yeah. how many so um, we do have access to chairs. We'll get them taken care of. Maybe we can get some help in getting them... Uh, what I can Down do is, here. yeah, I can, um, and I know Tom's going to be uh, very helpful in help getting public works to help. They'll probably send a truck down to Cecil 3, load up as many as they can, bring them down, and just lean them up against the uh, post like they did last time. Works for me. All right. I lost all my stuff on the shuffle. So, Barb, just list the signs on here. Is this only the ones you found? No, those are the ones we need. Right, Barbara, they all need to be confirmed, correct? Yeah, some of these she found. Some of these are going to be new signs. Yeah. Because some people, I mean. Well, Lagonis is going to have to be new, like I said before. He's going to need a new one. That's fine. One other thing that we can do is if, they're, if they've bumped up from their sponsorship level is just designate somehow with like a banner or something, you know, senior or silver donor instead of keeping making new signs every year as people change levels, you know, like the signs that we had last year that can, Tom Bowser made were like brown. I probably all saw them in the, instead of making all these different signs constantly, just put a little banner of. It's like, I can't remember, did Centermark and I have a sign last year? Yeah, they had I one. believe they did. Thought, okay, I think, yeah, Platinum did too. But, but okay. we got some new ones, and then some of the signs that were in there were like from years ago, so right. those people. So are we even, changing the colors now? No. So no, the signs we had from have... last year, we can use again this year. Absolutely. All except for except for Lagonis, because he right. changed a whole new entity. That's and that's why. fine. Yeah. yeah. Now, what about uh, the sponsorships signs? Are we gonna. That's what we're talking about. If they move up a level, I think we should get them a new sign, just so that we fulfill what we advertised for well, their signs. The signs that yeah. we said they would get, so yeah. we can't just say. Okay, no. so then we or will be making. Just so you signs. know, this is what I'm talking about, right? Jack. Barb. That's what I'm talking about, okay? Are we going to print these as they are, which has been a question on the table, or are we going to print them the same color as, as the others? Okay, so 
we can have different signs for if they've moved up in terms of the dollar amount or, and like what we had in an email that everybody saw and like kind of agreed on, is we can use the, sm we can use the same size sign for everybody and have like a banner like silver donor, platinum donor, or if you want to have different size, we can do. Well, Gateway, Gateway needs upgraded to a banner. We have a range resources banner currently. We have range. So Gateway is a big, and there's a big Gateway sign already down there, huge. So we're not going to be using these then, as, as was some conversation, correct? Is that, is I that thought that was, that was like a prototype that we sent out. I didn't think that was something we like actually decided yeah. on. Yeah, oh, okay. You're t so you're talking about the things I did for the acknowledgments. Yes, we decided that this, we would, if they didn't give the same amount every year, then we would have to redo every signs, these signs every year, whereas if we went with this other sign, we wouldn't be so locked in if we decided to change a format or anything. So that's where the idea came in that Barb had where we could get a ribbon that said, this is a silver sponsor, this is a gold sponsor, to add that on there that way instead of actually having the background indicate what their, what their sponsorship So was. keep the same signs. You just want an additional, either a ribbon or a, like a button or a sticker or is that what you guys are kind of thinking? I don't, these I thought were just for Facebook. Just, I didn't, right. I don't, I, I never took this as we were printing these signs out. Um, I think we're going to keep the same um, signs type like we have already currently. And if we want to add, which is not a bad idea, maybe just a, a placard that says gold sponsor, diamond sponsor, even though the sign size does, you know, indicate that, but the people aren't going to, the people don't know that. Well, that's a, you know. What Tommy does is he takes this picture and he, he puts it on a peeled, uh, peeled back uh, plastic, like sticky thing that, that he then puts on the corrugated plastic or, or something like that. So if we gave him this, that's exactly what we would get back. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. we wouldn't be able to use any of the signs from last year, which we have quite a few. So to save money. What's the cost of the signs, Jack? Do you know? Um, some of the bigger ones are like $100 a piece. These were about $16 each, and he's, his were more. His were... I know the, the, the higher the corrugated, you know, he's using more material, you know, it's, it's, it gets to be more expensive. So it can get quite expensive. That's why we thought we used last year's signs and somehow designated how the donor was. That was like we had that in an email that everybody kind of... And I thought that what Wendy was sending out there, that was something that was going online. I did bring it up in one of the emails that it was a thought, but it was not discussed or passed by any means. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I, I mean, How do you this, want to do this it? looks amazing. Don't get me wrong. Like we should consider these for our, maybe our bigger sponsors that do come through. Um, I know we were discussing um gateway as a banner but are we more interested in maybe the diamond you know maybe them in range since they are our two biggest if we made them a sign like that because we have a gigantic signs already that are down there for range and gateway that was in that email i sent everybody so those are the two we already have that are huge i don't know all right, what is, uh, what, how does everybody feel about what we have and what we want to lean towards, or do we just want to do a banner for Gateway? I mean, their sign is like 36 by 48. Right. It's Thirty, it should be 36 sign. by 36. It's it's, that's what sign. we used last year. Is that what we promised them this year, though? That's like, that's the only thing I would say is as long as every sign is what we promised when we send out our sponsorship letters what's our biggest the biggest is 36 by 36 or did it or did we have a banner well it, it was a banner. huge banner like I, it's actually a banner but they banner. donated that to us right. i mean i think even if we if we did get a banner for gateway it doesn't have to be as big as ranges is to compete with range okay and it doesn't have to be the quality ranges is because it's ranges is so heavy it's just like the ones we have hanging on the streets for fall festival right right I don't think they were that yeah. big, though. If they're, they're it's six feet, eight feet long? That are in the concession stand. I went down and did an inventory, so most of them were like those brown and gold ones that... Which I think we should stick with, I think. Yeah. 
and then there's a huge there's two big ones down there that was one for um, gateway and then they and then Tommy also did a very big one that had everybody's logo on um, which was down in the concession stand too like it was probably 48 by 48 and it had Oh yeah, I remember Thank that. But did Gateway well, have a everybody's logo on it? So do we want to still do that? I mean, all these. Well, let's back up to Gateway here for a second for the banner. Like, did, was there a banner from Gateway? Yeah. Not from. Oh, Gateway, was it from Range? From Range. But would they had a very big sign, huge sign. Which you know, I would they really care? Because like, really, we kind of upgraded them to Diamond status just because they were closer to being Diamond than they were the next level down. Okay. You know, the next level down was 2500 for... Um, well, we, we upgraded them to Platinum. Yeah, or whatever. The gate, Platinum is 48 by 48. Yeah. Or a band. Down there. Yeah, I, sent an, I went down and measured them all and sent an email. It was like a couple of weeks ago. So I have to go back and look. But I do... I mean, Gateways had a huge size. I mean, if it's 48 by 48, I'd say we're fine with it, don't you think? It's way bigger than everybody else's, which is about... Everybody else's is like that size. Yeah, that's two by two. They're eight, yeah, 18 by, yeah, something like that. They're, so that's what most of them are. So there's some people that have donated more than others, so do we want to have them have bigger signs? Well, they, we have to go with the size on here. We ha That was okay. published. Okay. So we have to. Okay, well, let's get, all right, let's get back to, do you guys want it, it's spelled out like gold or silver and it just be like a, a Velcro stick yeah, on? Is that, or do you guys want to do a sticker or? Or he could just print it up just the way we have it. But we have to get these in. Well, he would print it up just the way we have it and then we would just add something that sticks onto it that says gold or silver. We're, who's gonna print them? Well, that's what we're trying to figure Didn't out. Didn't you say? We were, I was going to use Tommy for that. Use your guy. Okay. All right, so. I actually, when I was at the trophy place, I asked them to see their ribbons so I could see if they had anything that was like a gold, a silver, and they were so disorganized they couldn't find their samples. Well, it wouldn't even have to be an actual ribbon, but just like well, something I just meant anything. like a sticker of a ribbon. But they couldn't find their samples. It could be kind of cool to do a ribbon. Maybe somebody would want that ribbon to put up like. In their place afterwards, so like we could hang the ribbons, we could hang the ribbons on the sign, and then if any of the sponsors wanted to take theirs and display it, they could take it. Are they just gonna be plain ribbons? Are you thinking of anything that'd be putting on the ribbon, like twenty one with twenty one or twenty two fall festival sponsor? Gold sponsor, silver sponsor. That would be nice, but I don't know. Maybe we're getting too difficult now. Maybe we should just approve signs. That's why I was just trying to find something. Let's I mean, we can approve the signs. She can be working on the signs, and then if we come across anything that would work out, it would be easy enough to add it if it's just something that's going to attach via. Yeah, I was going to use Tommy because so he did the ones for the sponsors last year. I switched to this guy for these just because it was, it was less expensive. But Tommy is very fast. He did a great job, you know. We just need to get this He's done. there for us, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's approve the signs that we have. We'll double check gateways. Because, I mean, I think we did advertise a 48 by 48 at that level, or a banner. I so go we, back down and... Um, yeah, we need to double check this. All right. We have... We have no escape, don't we? Were they? They were last year. Yeah, they're on there. They'll be on the list sign, though. Okay. They'll be on the 250 and list okay. sign. And uh, AUMR mm -hmm. actuators, too. Okay. 2022 events, uh, Trail of Treats, uh, October 22nd, 2022. Um, we'll need to get the sign ups going probably, what, right before Fall Festival, I'll right after? Today. Hopefully, I'll get them this week. Okay. So we'll get the events um, going um, with the table signups and everything too. Okay. Um, we'll probably have to start looking at candy and maybe other options um, from candy. I know we might talk about stickers or something. Dan brought up the option too. Uh, maybe at one place we can actually give out ornaments that the kids paint themselves instead of candy at one of our stations. And then we could even invite them to bring it back and put it on the tree after the tree is decorated or something if they wanted to. So, you know, 
It's a good idea. I thought that was a nice idea. Clever. Yeah. Jack, so. how, how do you think um, Township would feel if um, – it's kind of something just ran through my head when we were doing the reading picnic is um, giving away them little wooden, because they had the little wooden things at the reading picnic, um, Christmas ornaments, uh, little wooden ornaments. The kids can take home and paint themselves. And then if we welcome them back, you know, while the tree is lit up, if they could be able to hang those, that on the, on the tree. Oh, let's do a nightmare before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea because... Hey, this is, come on. Um, I had somebody call me today, a vendor that wanted to set up a lemonade truck for the for light up night, and I explained to him, um, you know, it, it it wasn't a community event; it was us, you know, doing it. And I got to thinking, well, you know, if we do something like this where they have ornaments, um, we could set it up for another time where they can come back and hang those ornaments. We've got a lot of Christmas trees down there, you know. I mean, down in so. Yeah, I mean, if you wanna if you wanna do something where you have the initial light up night and then a time where they can come back, we could, you know, we could do something small and have have kids hang those ornaments once they, you know, make them. Meet Santa. Hmm. Meet Santa. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was asking for a Santa on Facebook, and I almost put Ask Jeff King. <laughs> Let, last name is Birdie. Okay. <laughs> you can put Danny in that. I did find that email. It's 48 by 48 is what's so we're down there yeah. already, the gateway sign. Okay. So is that, we're good with that, I think, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, we should all be good with signs. We just need to add a couple of new ones. Are we yeah, we good on cool. which new ones we need to add and everything? Yeah, and I have to add some to this list, too, since okay. this list was done. Okay. Real quick, on trail treats, I might have an in on Sarah's, Wendy. Really? Cool. Yeah. So. Didn't you say that last year? Wow, <laughs> but but bad. but I got I got an inside in. Last year in was <laughs> she failed me. All right, light up night uh, again. We're just planning on that's when the lights will probably go up for now. Uh, I know we're all pretty tired after everything, but uh, that'll be December tenth, two thousand twenty-two. Hopefully, we can get the weather. Depending on weather, we get the lights up and get the park decorated. So, any new matters to bring up? I got none. Only thing I would recommend, Jack. Did you get a key for that storage room yet? A, a key for the storage room? No, I don't, I don't have anything yet. I would ideally like to get that stuff moved definitely before Fall Festival. Even if, if we don't have shelvings or nothing, if we can just get that stuff oh, back Oh, you got there my and... text today, right, Jack? My message? I sent you that link. Yeah. I think. <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, I have it. Messenger. If you send it to me, I have it. Okay. Um, and I'll look at it. Um, I'll get Bill's key, Bill Renato's key. Okay. And then I'll have uh, some made for, um, I guess. I'm not even worried about it. I, as long as you have one and we can get that stuff back in our room before Fall Festival, I'll be happy. What we can do is we can put it somewhere in the concession stand that only we know, like up in the cabinet or, or someplace, so that whoever goes in there can get the key and go into the, you know. Our, right? no, that sounds good. And like I said, I, I think even if we can just do it by car crews, that's eight that weekend of the 18th, if we can just. You know, just put that stuff into that room. We can sweep up, clean up. I know it's a little bit of construction. We probably need to clean up a little bit before that car cruise too. So I'll bring my shop back. Then. Okay. Okay. Everybody, good. Yep. yep. All right. Cecil Township Parks and Recreation Board meeting on September first, two thousand twenty-two, adjourned at eight sixteen.